We are going to open with the 10 minute presentation portion. You've been called back by the company. You gave your full presentation to for a second visit. They've asked you to speak only about the ethical aspects of the problem and to explain why your solution successfully handles any ethical issues. You will have 10 minutes. There will be no Q&A. You may not use slides or video, and you probably don't want to have more than two or three members of your team do this. So with that, we can get started. Okay, so hi, my name is Christine Guinnessy, and I am the Sustainability Chair of Nike's Corporate Responsibility, Sustainability, and Governance Committee. Thank you so much for joining us to come back and talk about the ethical implications of our pitch. I'm joined today by Gina, who is the Chair of Ethics for our committee, and Maceo, who is our Financial Director. We're here to talk further, like I said, on the ethical implications. So a young woman in Bangladesh in one of our factories had suffered from multiple faintings due to the extremely harsh working conditions in the outsourced factory that we use. She was not able to receive the proper health care or assistance. Um, and we believe that we must do better for people like her because unfortunately, this is not a unique story. It's actually very common. So we must do better for our workers, um, to both to set an example as an industry leader on fair labor for all, which is especially true for women because 70% of our manufacturing force is made up of women. And third, we as a company are only as strong as our weakest link. So we must do better for those who are making our clothes on the ground to do better overall as a company. I'm now going to turn it over to Maceo to talk further about some of the ethical frameworks that we use to address this problem. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Christine. Hello, my name is Maceo Patrick, and I am the financial director of the Corporate Responsibility, Sustainability, and Governance Committee at Nike. In 2019, we have been valued at over $32 billion dollars. And we have clearly come a long way since our creation in 1964 in Eugene, Oregon. Now today, we have over 525 factories, which have been spread out over 40 countries. Throughout this time, we have been greatly increasing our net income and our sales. And that's just a, a testament of our leadership in the sports apparel industry. In the 1990s, a report was released that stated that how we at Nike tend to exploit our workers. This report delineated how we utilize sweatshop labor, child labor, and other inhumane working conditions. And we do all of these things to increase our profits. And we believe that it is time to mend our mistakes and to continue pushing forward. We at Nike are members of the United Nations Global Compact and as members of such a prestigious group, it is our duty and responsibility to create and implement policies to improve working conditions throughout the, manu the manufacturing process and in our company. And even after doing this, our job is still not done. There are still strides that need to be made and we must continue to improve working conditions and to increase transparency throughout our company and our supply chain. We have conjured and have made famous our slogan, which is just do it. And this slogan motivates athletes to do their best on and off the field while training and to always put their best foot forward. And we believe that we should put our, our mantra at work and we should uphold it ourselves. We will do this by giving our workers our best, putting our best foot forward per se, and by giving them fair working conditions and by just increasing our standards and by making the workplace a safe place. Recently, however, we have experienced uh, in Cambodia, there have been mass faintings, and this is because of high room temperatures without AC. We have been called to court in Oregon and the Oregon District Court because of a gender inequality case. And we've also been accused of violations of the Equal Pay Act. And this states that women were paid less than men for the same uh, amount of work. And now we'll leave it to Gina who will conclude our presentation. Thank you, Maceo, for that overview and history of the company. 
Hi, my name is Gina Payton, and I will lay out the necessity of transparency and the continual need for workers' equity within our supply chain. As leaders within the sportswear industry, we cannot afford to overlook these issues. If we keep repeating the same issues in the past, we have a potential to continue to damage our brand image. In an age dominated by social media and young consumers that are seeking out ethically sourced and sustainable clothing, we must act in these changing times. Nike has been known to empower people to stand up for what they believe in, especially on social issues. The fact that we decided to back Colin Kaepernick for having the courage to make a stand for what he believed in is quite telling of Nike and our values. We chose to do this because we wanted to stand behind him, we wanted to stand with him, and we chose to do well by doing good. It shows the world that Nike has also has the courage to lead by example. However, we should not just act in this manner on social issues, especially the ones that we can control mostly in the name of eradicating workers' inequity throughout our company supply chain management. We should not just do it when there's clout to gain. We should do it because it is the right thing to do as ethical leaders and as industry leaders. Due to our strong leadership within the company, it is necessary that we take on our previously mentioned recommendations and to do so with honesty and transparency. We owe it to all of our stakeholders to be upfront honest and accountable for the entirety of our supply chain management. With this transparency, there is a need for us to hold frequent and random audits of the plant and to thoroughly analyze our findings. We must use these findings and collect the data to further improve the livelihood of the people that are involved with our supply chain management and make their working conditions better for them because ultimately it will be better for us. Once we reach this strong level of transparency, other industry leaders will have no choice but to fall in line with what we have done and follow with the improvements that we have created. We must lead by example. We have shown initiative in improving our environmental factors within our supply chain management, but we must take a turn to look at the holisticness of the supply chain management and focus on human labor and the social aspects of the manufacturing process. With our challenges we have faced in the past, we have been perceived sometimes as a company that prioritizes profits over people and one that compromises human rights. We should work to overcome these ideas that people have about us and we should live up to a higher standard and we must set the track for the rest of the industry leaders to follow. We have to head, tackle these issues head on. The company must use our, use our weaknesses and transform them into opportunities for growth. It is our responsibility as industry leaders to defend the rights of the, the most vulnerable and to practice comprehensive sustainability within our supply chain. We should not just do it. We must go above and beyond that. We must do well by doing good. Thank you so much for your time. Bye.